Hey YouTube, today we take a look at the guitars that have made it into my studio in 2019. Stay tuned. Well, it's been an interesting year, 2019. Uh, I figured I'd do this end of the year video to show you where I've ended up as far as my guitar uh, journey playing and acquiring instruments. Uh, you know, I've been kind of getting those right pieces for me as far as guitars go. There's certain things that I've been kind of working my way up as I gotten back into music. And uh, so I figured I'd do a video and show you what, uh, where I'm at, you know, and, um, give you a little bit more detail of how I got there and uh, so forth. So I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, again, if you like the channel and like the content, hit that subscribe button. It's always appreciated. So let's start off with the latest addition to the collection. Um, it is, and I did a separate video on this one kind of featuring this, this guitar. It's a uh, Fender Custom Shop. It's a 51 reissue, a Telecaster, no caster they call it. And I got this one just a few weeks ago, so uh, end of November. So Black Friday is when I picked this up. They had a huge deal at uh, one of the music stores that I go to on a frequent basis. And uh, I had gotten through a couple of tellies this year, and I'm a big Telecaster fan. My, my guitars of choice have always been Les Pauls and Telecasters. And uh, I was looking for that ultimate Telecaster. I've gone through a few, like I said, that are, you know, I, I was happy with them. Just they, they were always missing a little something. So I was always on the lookout for that ultimate thing for me. And when I saw this one, uh, this was definitely fit the bill. Uh, it's built quality is built like a tank. It's got great, great features. The pickups are some of the best pickups I've heard in a guitar in a long time. Um, it's all custom shop, so attention to detail is all there. It's about seven pounds or so. It's got that set lover humbucker in the neck, and it's got a great um, custom shop uh, single coil in the bridge, which is absolutely insane. So, it, I, I like I said, I did a video just on this guitar that was released, um, or it might already be released as we're watching this video that shows some clip and some clips of this guitar. And if you watch my live stream, I think episode 41, uh, my Monday night live show, I did a, a jam with it. So you get to hear it a little bit on that. It's a great rock and roll guitar. It's a great country guitar. It's a great blues guitar. It can do pretty much everything. And being a studio musician, primarily uh, having this as a tool in the studio is invaluable to me. So really happy with that. So again, this is, and this is a 2019 model. So it's brand new. And uh, there it is. So let's go to the next one. So this is my um, 2000, actually this is a 1996 Les Paul uh, R6. So it's a 1956 reissue. It's got P90s in it. It's gold top. This is a, to me, a classic instrument that's, you know, when you think of Les Pauls, you, you have a vision of that 59 burst, um, to me, there's three of them. There's the uh, 59 Burst, there's a gold top with P90s, and then there's the black custom with the white binding. Those are my holy trinity, let's say, of Les Pauls. And I'm still on the hunt for the black custom with the white binding, but uh, but I've got this one and I've got the other the Burst that we'll look at in a minute. Um, again, this is a 1996. Uh, I picked this up from a collector uh, here in Ontario. I was looking at them for a while. Uh, I did want a nice P90 Les Paul at some point. I had a classic uh, back in 2018. Liked it. I just thought the guitar was, uh, it was very heavy. The P90s in it were okay, but these are, you know, on a different level, custom shop wise. This is a custom shop guitar as well. So the build quality, and it's very light for a Les Paul. Uh, you know, when you're talking about Les Pauls, you're usually talking about heavier guitars. Custom shop stuff, they usually pick, you know, premium top of the line wood. So you get 
you know, this is a solid piece of wood. There's no weight relief or anything, but it's still, you know, probably eight and a half pounds compared to 10. So it, it makes a difference. This guitar plays amazingly. I've done some recording with it. The P90s sound amazing. Very comfortable neck. Uh, I've come accustomed to playing guitars that have a little bit of a bigger neck. Um, when I got back into guitars in 2018, I thought I would like the smaller necks, but it tends to, that I like the chunkier neck. So as some of the other guitars that I had in the past, I've traded or sold and got these ones. I've always focused on getting a little bit of a bigger neck. This one is, you know, it's not crazy big. It's, uh, you know, like 59s, 58s and so forth. They have a little bit of thicker thicker neck but very very comfortable shape to them and they play amazing so there's guitar number two and it's a 1996 r6 gibson les paul gold top with p90s let's have a look at the next one all right folks so yeah this isn't a guitar it's a bass and uh, most of you uh if you follow me and um have, have known me for a while i i was a bass player for over you know 25 30 years uh, playing bass as since I was, uh, you know, starting in music, uh, played in bands and the last band I was with, uh, broke up in 2007, but up till that point I was playing bass. And, uh, so the basses that I gravitated to, uh, I played different basses as I grew up. I had Fender, I had Hamer, I had Charvel, um, you know, a couple of different things, but in the late nineties, uh, when we formed Smear and I, and, and I was playing you know, trying to find that right instrument that really fit me. The Ernie Ball, when I tried this, that's that was like the bass for me. It It's really comfortable. It sounds amazing. It can do all kinds of things. This is, and then, so I sold all my gear in 2007 when that last band broke up. So I didn't have a bass or anything of that nature. So getting back into music in 2018, um, you know, I needed a bass, obviously, because I'm going to be writing and recording and so forth. So made sense so i had a yamaha bass uh, in 2018 that i had to do some recording with i just picked it up as something that was a little bit cheaper and just because i didn't know how involved i would want to get back into music so i picked that one up I was never really that comfortable with that bass it's just something that i picked up for the price i felt it was good and for what it was going to be used for it was adequate but i always missed having my my baby the the Ernie Ball, that's where my comfort zone is when it comes to bass. So in 2019, this past year, I was able to acquire this uh, brand new, uh, this is the new version of the Ernie Ball Stingray Special, and it's amazing. It's got a nice roasted maple neck. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's really nice. It's nice and smooth back here. So it's one of the best built basses that I've played, and I've played many. <laughs> So it's really, really nice. It's got actually, the new ones now, they've got uh, two 9 volt batteries in here. They used to only have the one, so now they're running on 18 volts. And it gives you way more headroom as far as the pickup goes. So the tonality is is the, ver the variation and the actual output is very, very good. Um, so, but yeah, this is where I'm comfortable with when it comes to basses and this is appearing on all my recordings uh so i picked this up in the summer uh or yeah i think it was around the summertime so ever since then everything that i've recorded has all been you know bass wise has, has been this baby here and I, i'm really happy that i was able to acquire this one so yeah so 2019 music man stingray special actually all right let's look at the next guitar so here's another Telecaster. This is my Sir Telecaster. I, I didn't get, I did I get this one? I got this one in late 2018. I traded for another instrument. A guy in, uh, in Toronto had this one and wanted to trade for one of my Les Pauls that I was looking to sell anyway. So I made the trade and it's been a great guitar. I really enjoy it. But since getting the custom shop, the custom shop Tele, you know, is basically my go-to Telecaster. So this one, I've actually got it on the market. I just put it on the market about a week ago. Uh, it's uh, put it up for sale. So if any of you are interested in a Sir Telecaster at a great price, let me know. Put it in the comments. I'll give you uh, the details there. But it's been a great guitar. I mean, it's got great features. It's got the locking 
the locking tuners. It's got a great contoured body. Uh, pickups are, you know, sir quality. The, what, when, when you get a sir guitar, you're definitely getting a quality instrument, as most of you know that are in the community that, uh, that understand, you know, boutique guitars and sirs and the, the, how they're built and how, uh, you know, good they are. So just for me, uh, the reason that I'm selling this one, that I'm not keeping it as part of the collection, is because I'm making room, I'm trying to find that black Les Paul custom with the white binding. So in order for me to acquire that one, knowing that I won't be using this guitar as much now that I have the custom shop fender, uh, it made sense to uh, you know put it out on the market and use those funds towards the Les Paul custom that I'm looking to get. So that's just nature of the game. Some folks uh, like to keep all their instruments no matter what, and they just collect them. And for me, it's just a matter of some sometimes something has to go if it's if it makes sense and I'm not using it as much, then then that's what happens, and I'm fine with that. So this is I believe a 2016 model. I think it's a 2016 model, but it's the classic T. So if you look up on the Sir website, it gives you all the details. Maple neck. I think this is an, I'm not sure if this is ash or alder, but uh, it's a great guitar. It's nice and light and it sounds amazing. I've used it on many recordings. So, so there you are. So this is the next one. So let's look at the last guitar that, uh, in the collection that I've gotten so far. And I, and this one is very special to me. All right. So now we get to the last but not least guitar. This is a milestone guitar for me. This is one that I've been eyeing for quite a while now and uh, it's an R9. A two, uh, this is a 2018 version of that guitar. Uh, I bought it used but it, it still had the tags on it. Again, it was a collector who bought it direct from Nashville and had it in his collection just you know, was looking to part with some of his collection to make room for other things like a lot of people do. So I was fortunate that I did find, uh, find his advertisement and, uh, contacted him and was able to go up and play the guitar and, and get a good look at it and everything and, uh, work a deal that made sense for both me and the collector. So I was so fortunate to get it. And it's been a, such an amazing guitar. It is my favorite guitar that I've ever had or currently have. Again, this is a 2018 R9. It's got a great neck on it. It's probably the best feeling neck that I've, that I have, or that I've ever played actually. Uh, if I, like I've said this in other videos that I've made, if I could have every guitar, <laughs> just have this neck on, put it all on any guitar that I play, I would be completely uh, happy with that because it's so, uh, so good. Sounds amazing. These pickups are highly sought after. I mean, the original PAFs, you can look online and some people are selling them for $5,000 just for, for the pickups. And these are, you know, as close as you're ever going to get to that original pickup. And you can only get these ones when you get a custom shop, um, you know, R9 or R8 or something of that nature. That's the only way you can't buy them as accessories, like from Gibson and put them in something else. It's just, that's the way they work. But Great guitar. The build on it is amazing. The attention to detail. The other thing that happened to me in 2019, I went into NAM, Summer NAM in Nashville, and uh, I was able to get an invitation to the custom shop factory where they build all these guitars and got to meet the people there uh, and, and see the process and go through the whole factory. It was an amazing experience. I'd like to thank Al John Go who uh, facilitated that for me to do that. And Eric from EVH obviously uh, got me the contact from Al John and, and got me that opportunity. I was able to attend a Gibson VIP concert at NAMM as well. And that whole evening was just, I can't express to you how, um, how privileged I, or how lucky I think I would say that, that I was able to attend that and the experience really uh, meant a lot to me. And, being a huge Gibson fan uh, was something else to actually go into the factory and talk to the people who build these guitars and really see the process and the attention to detail that goes into these custom shop Les Pauls and other Les Pauls, other custom shop Gibsons that come out of that factory. So really fortunate. And this is, like I said, this is kind of a milestone guitar for me. Uh, I turned 50 this year and, and part of that whole thing for me turning 50, I wanted to, to get the R9. This was kind of my, making it to 50, I guess, uh, present. And I was fortunate to, to find one that fit my budget that, that I was able to work a deal out and get it. So 
So there you go. That's my 2019 uh, guitar collection so far. There is one guitar that's still on the radar for me. I don't think it might. I mean, we still got a couple of weeks left in the year. It might make it into the collection before the end of the year if I find the right deal and the right uh, guitar. It's a black Les Paul custom with white binding. That's the kind of what I'm looking for. Uh, and if it doesn't happen in 2019, well, there you go. It's a goal in 2020 to keep looking. And it's, it's part of the fun. It's the finding that right instrument and the part of the journey, right? So this stuff is a lot of fun. And as long as you do things that you can within your means and you do it smart, cause I, you know, I buy a guitar and if I want something else or it doesn't really work as far as there's something better that I want, I kind of work my way up to that. So I'll sell something and trade something and kind of do that. It's part of the, the process so it'd be nice to have uh, millions of dollars in the bank and just uh, whatever you want you just go out and write a check for it or then off you go but it's not really my reality so I know people <laughs> look at the guitars and say oh look at all the nice guitars you've got you must have a lot of money and all that stuff that's not the case it's just a uh, working deals and trading and doing some stuff and just making making things happen you know if you want something bad enough there's always a way to to make it happen so there you go another quick look at the headstock and there it is. So again, thanks for uh, joining me as uh, the year end uh, videos come out here, which I uh, show you some of my collection and we talk about what we've done in 2019. 2020 looks uh, pretty uh, amazing as well. We can't wait to get started with that stuff. Uh, thanks for watching all the videos, supporting the live streams and, you know, interacting with me. It's that's why I do it. It's to be part of the community and uh, subscribe if you like the channel and uh, hit that like button. Really appreciate your support, all right? So until next time, uh, get out there and play some guitar, right? We only live once, so enjoy your life, all right? Take care. <laughs>